everyone, welcome to the ECAM channel. This week, we invited Lingyi again to present the different fabrication methods that is used in the maxing based fibers, yarns, and fabrics. Today's video is made based on Dr. Levy's review article published on the advanced functional materials. For more information, please refer to the original paper. A link to the paper is given in the description of the video below. The third chapter is about the fabrication method of making maxing based fibers, yarns, and fabrics. So in literature, there are two main approaches. The first is to call maxing onto the surface of substrate. The second is to introduce maxing into a spinning solution and spin into fibers. Each fabrication method is reviewed in terms of simplicity, scalability, and cost. And examples are given in the following slides. The fibrous mechanical, electrical, electrochemical properties will be discussed in the following chapter in detail. The first method is a coating method. It's the simplest and most cost-effective method. It puts little restriction on the substrate. It can be easily applied and can be repeated until the desired loading is achieved. However, it's hard to achieve a very high maxing loading with this method and may require a surface modification. It could result in larger fiber diameters if commercial yarns are used as a substrate. It may also change the texture and flexibility of the yarns, which could uh, affect the customer adoption of these yarns because they are not as comfortable as natural yarns. The key for coating success is to achieve good adhesion between maxine and substrate, which results in high maxine loading and good durability. Maxine can naturally adhere well to substrates that are hydrophilic, positively charged, or contain uh, hydroxyl and amine functional groups because maxines are negatively charged and hydrophilic. Here I would like to give two examples where good adhesion was naturally achieved. In the first research, maxine yarns, uh, cellular yarns, were first immersed in a uh, dispersion of small maxine flakes for the maxine flakes to be infiltrated into the structure of the yarns, and then immersing a dispersion of uh, large maxine flakes for the large maxine fl flakes to form a shell around the yarn. As from this washing test, we can see good adhesion was achieved because little uh, loading and uh, resist change were observed through 45 circles of high temperature washing. The second example applies maxine uh, onto nylon 6 fibers. As we can see from the XPS N1 S spectrum, a second peak appeared around 397.5 EV, which often is assigned to titanium nitrogen bonding. It was speculated that a covalent bond between the hydroxyl groups on the maxine and the nylon amine groups were formed, and so, which uh, is an indication of good adhesion. Here I would like to give two examples where surface modification was required in order to achieve good adhesion. In the first example, P.PSS function as a conductive binder to uh, glue maxine onto the uh, carbon fibers. With this method, a high maxine loading of 3 mg per centimeter was achieved and a good adhesion was demonstrated through this bending test. And in the second example, hydrophobic polymer PCL was selected as a substrate. Multiple steps had to be taken in order to modify this high, uh, substrate to be compatible with maxine. First, uh, surfactant was added into the spending solution together with PLC to make the resulting fibers slightly hydrophilic. And then the fibers were treated with 5 minutes oxygen plasma, and then the fibers were immersed in branched PEI, which is a positively charged polymer. The second method is electrospinning. It is the best method to produce nanoscale fibers from a polymer and polymer-based solution. It creates high specific surface area, which is desirable for energy storage functions because it promotes iron absorption and reversible surface redox reactions. And those fibers are often durable to wash and abrasion because maxine flakes are trapped within the fiber. However, it's very difficult to electrospin conductive materials, and this method is sensitive to agglomeration due to the small diameter of the yarns, and the maxines are insulated in the polymers, resulting in low conductivity. 
few strategies have been explored to address the conductivity issue. The first is to use a polymer that can be carbonized after electro spinning, such as PAN polymer. The second is to do a modification to the traditional electro spinning setting by changing the traditional metal collector into a conductive yarn and use the yarn as the substrate. In this example here, a PET yarn was coated with a thin layer of nickel and copper to render it conductive, and it was used a collector to receive a shell of electrospun maxine nanofibers. The third method is wet spinning. This is a method that has already been widely used in the textile industry. It can be used to spawn a wide range of materials with maxine. It can achieve very high maxine loading, even 100% maxine liquid crystal fibers. However, it often forms fibers of a larger diameter compared to electrospinning, spinning, and modifications in the spinning setup, coagulation baths, and post-treatment may be required for the success of wet spinning. As we can see from the example on the bottom on the left, here, solution of maxine and uh, P.PSS had to be spun upward because it's lighter than the coagulation bath. Also, in this method, the choice of coagulation bath is important because it affects the packing of maxine in the resulting fiber. As we can see from the two S uh, uh, SEM images on the bottom, the fibers solidified in cotton bath is a lot denser than the fibers solidified in acidic acid bath. The fourth method is by scrolling. In this method, maxine dispersion was drop casted into carbon nanotube forest, and then the carbon nanotube forest are twisted into a yarn. As we can see from the SEM images, the maxine flakes are trapped within the carbon nanotube corridors. The advantage of this method is it can first achieve a very high active nanoparticle loading up to 98 weight percent. Most importantly, this method allows the nanoparticles to be electrochemically accessible to electrolyte because the carbon nanotube form a corridor rather than a complete block. However, the drawback of this method is it only produces yarns of very limited lengths, uh, often in a few centimeters. And the carbon nanotube forests are expensive. And right now, there's still concerns regarding the use of carbon nanotubes in next-to-skin wearable devices. Thank you so much, Lin Yi, for the nice presentation of the third section of the review article. We have two more videos about the Maxine wearable devices and will update in the following weeks. As you may notice that we update every Sunday as our speakers and instructors are all researchers working the lab full time. And we spend our weekend for free knowledge sharing. The videos in our ECAM channels are completely free and only for educational purposes and knowledge distribution. Subscribe us and like our video will certainly motivate us to go further. If you have any suggestions or find anything that conflict of interest in any type, just leave us some comments. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.